Hello student, welcome to the one more session of uh, Microcontrol and Embedded System. I am Vasan Naik from Kendra Engineering College. In, in the last session, we studied uh, the different types of memory which is used inside the embedded system that is ROM and RAM. Different types of ROM we studied, different types of RAM we studied. Other than that, uh, uh, in the last video we have seen uh, what, is this, uh, what are the different input device and output device like sensors and uh, actuators. So, in this uh, video, we will study the working of a stepper motor. Stepper motor is a output device. So, stepper motor is a electromechanical device. Uh, it will produce a discrete rotation uh, based on the input signal, based on the input signal that is electrical signal from the uh, uh, this one the processor. Based on the electrical signal from the processor, it will produce the uh, discrete rotation that means you can control the stepper motor you can control the stepper motor to rotate in uh, in the either direction uh, in the different angle so stepper motors are widely used in different applications like uh, industrial embedded applications then it is also used in robotics control systems and it is also used in uh, like small stepper motors are used in CD, inside the CD drive, DVD drive, etc. There is consumer electronics. Then inside the printer you can find like uh, the stepper motor. The main application of the stepper motor inside the printer to move the cartridge to left and right or right to left. And also uh, stepper motors are used inside the printer and fa fax machines for the paper uh, feeding mechanism. Like this, there are so many applications of the stepper motor. So, based on the call winding arrangement, two phase stepper motor is classified into one is unipolar, second one is bipolar. So, unipolar stepper motor contains two windings per phase, per phase, then bipolar stepper motor contains a single winding per phase. So, there are two windings here, single windings. So, here you can see the diagram, schematic diagram of the stepper motor. You can see here uh, four windings or four coils or you can call four folds A, B, C, D. So, this is the actually, this is the rotor section which rotates actually. This is the rotor section which rotates and uh, this is the stator section which is fixed. This is the stator section which is fixed. So now, so the direction of rotation of a stepper motor is controlled by changing the direction of the current flow. So here you can see the coils are represented by A, A, B, C, D. Coil A and C carry the current in the opposite direction for phase 1. Similarly, B and D carry the current in the opposite direction for phase 2. Phase two. So, coil A and C carry the current in one uh, opposite direction for phase 1 and co similarly coil B and D carry the current uh, in opposite direction for phase 2. Uh, in bipolar, uh, as I said, it contains single winding. So, single winding for so reversing the motor uh, rotation in the current flow. So, uh, like for reversing the motor rotation, the current flow through the winding uh, is reversed uh, dynamically. So, uh, before proceeding to, uh, uh, there are different types of uh, uh, stepping of the stepper motor. So, that is full step, uh, uh, half step, uh, wave step, etc. We will see now the working of the stepper motor, how it works. For the uh, like uh, representation purpose, I have drawn the, uh, like uh, I have used this diagram. I have used this diagram. Here you can see like four poles are there, that is. There are four poles here, you can see A, B, C, D. A and C are opposite poles. So similarly, B and D are the opposite poles. And on each pole, on the each pole uh, or on the coil, you can see the winding. And uh, these windings are opposite in uh, direction. You see the windings of this one. Uh, the windings go something like this. Here you see the windings go something like this. So, windings are opposite in direction. Similarly, you take the pole B and D. 
here also the windings are opposite in direction so this is this creates uh, like both like uh, south pole and uh, the because of this opposite uh, the, the direction of the windings uh, one pole acts like a north pole other pole acts like a south pole one pole acts like a north pole and other pole acts like a south pole so if i want to rotate the rotor i have to energize the coil a and c when you energize, energize the coil a and c then it will rotate one step that time you have to make the coil you have to uh, de-energize the coil D and P that is suppose if I give logic 1 to A and C then I have to give logic 0 to B and D when I give logic 1 to B and D then I have to give logic 0 to A and C so if you see here the rotor part here uh, we have shown 8 teeth like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If you consider normal rotor, in, uh, it, it will have minimum 50 teeth. 50 teeth. Here, for the, uh, to, in order to represent the working purpose, I have show, we have shown 8 teeth. In the diagram, 8 teeth are shown. So now, if you energize the coil A and C by giving logical 1, then this becomes, uh, assume this becomes north pole and this becomes south pole, then this north of this teeth will get attracted towards this one and this south will get attracted towards this one because this is north. So this south will get attracted towards this one. So this north will get attracted towards this one. So this one. Uh, that means it will make one rotation. After that, you energize uh, coil B and D. That time it will make one more rotation. Like that, uh, like that, if you keep on energizing the coil, it will complete one full rotation. It will complete one full rotation. So this is the diagram, uh, uh, diagram for uh, explanation purpose we are using. Here you can see four poles are there, that is A, B, C, D. And here for explanation purpose, only two teeth are shown in the rotor. This is the north and this is the south. So here four poles are there that is so this one is uh, this one is pole A this one is uh, pole C and uh, this one is pole B this is A this is B this is C and this one is a D suppose if I energize uh, this and this uh, this and this uh, now this becomes south, this becomes north, think this becomes south and this becomes north, that time south and south and south, this, this south pole ripple, the, this, I, I mean this teeth get rippled because of this uh, uh, same pole and it will get attracted towards the north pole. So it will make one rotation, one rotation. Now this, this teeth become uh, become uh, horizontal. Once again, if you energize, uh, energize uh, uh, like uh, this and this, uh, then it will make one more rotation. In that way, you need to ener energize the coil to make the complete rotation. Now we will see here, there are different types of uh, stepping of the stepper motor first one is called as a full step second one is a wave step third one is a half step in the full step so first you need to ener energize coil a and coil b so as i uh, explained in the earlier diagram when you energize coil a and coil b that is when you energize uh, coil a this one coil a and coil b this will this will get get shifted by one one step now in the second time you will energize coil b and coil c now this will get shifted by one more step so in the third you will energize c and d next d and a like for full rotation it requires like full rotation it requires uh, totally four uh, steps here four steps full rotation full rotation like three 360 degree rotation it requires four steps 
suppose in order to achieve wave step you no need to energize both coil in this case you have need to energize only one coil one coil at a time for example this coil if you energize this coil and if this becomes south then it will ripple from this one and it will move towards that side similarly if you energize that coil once again it will ripple uh, once again and move towards uh, move, makes one more step if you once again energize this coil it will make one more step like this it will rotate so we have one more uh, classification that is half step in the half step uh, you first uh, energize coil a then you energize coil a and coil b when you energize only one coil in the half step uh, this this will not make one step this will not make one step this will make only half step that is this s will come and stay in between here and this n will like this it will remain like this like this so it will not make full step full step means from ear to ear it will make half step so so next in the next iteration in the next uh, this one process you need to analyze coil a and coil b that time it will, it will make full step uh, full step that is it will come to the uh, it will uh, it will complete full step after that uh, you need to energize only one coil uh, coil b then it will make half step next uh, you need to energize uh, once again uh, coil b and coil c like this it will continue that's that's why here eight iterations are there in the other cases and all four iterations are there so these are the three types of stepping of the stepper motors now we need to understand like what is the angle it will cover in single step So we will see here, so what is the angle uh, it will cover or what is the step angle. So that is calculated by the formula 360 divided by number of uh, uh, like uh, stator poles and number of uh, rotor teeth. We know normally there will be 50 teeth, 50 teeth will be there and number of stator poles, 4 poles will be there. So if you calculate 360 divided by 4 into 50, you will get 1.8 degree. That means uh, to cover 180 degrees, uh, uh, sorry, to cover 180 degrees, uh, you need to uh, uh, need to uh, make 100 steps. So to cover 360 degrees, uh, one complete rotation, you need to make 200 steps. Similarly, in wave step, it is same, but in half half step, uh, it is divided by 2. It comes like a 0. Uh, uh, 9 degree something like that so now how you will connect stepper motor stepper motor to uh, microcontroller you cannot directly connect uh, stepper motor to microcontroller uh, there is a driver IC so in order to connect the stepper motor or interfacing IC is IC circuit board is required in order to connect the motor into stepper motor into microcontroller you can see this is the IC the IC number is ULN uh, 2803 so uh, it is available from uh, Texas Instruments and ST Microelectronics this IC is used to interface stepper motor to the microcontroller. Stepper motor is connected to this IC and four more pins on this IC is connected to the port pin of the microcontroller. Port pin of the microcontroller. With this uh, you can interface the stepper motor uh, to stepper motor to microcontroller. So with this student uh, uh, we have completed the stepper motor. The next uh, thing is a relay you will see this one in the next session thank you hello student welcome to the one more video session of a microcontroller and embedded system this is Vasan Naik from Kendra Engineering College in the last video we studied different input and output device that can be connected to the embedded systems uh, embedded system other than that we have studied uh, the memory concept like RAM and ROM so in this uh, video we are going to understand uh, remaining output device like uh, 
फिजो बजर पुश बटन स्विच कीबोर्ड स्विच कीबोर्ड पैड पुश बटन स्विच फिजो बजर ऑल दीज थिंग्स वी आर वील गोइंग टू स्टडी फर्स्ट वील सी रिले रिले इज ऑल्सो ए एलेक्ट्रो मैकेनिकल डिवाइस इट कैन बी यूज इट इट नॉर्मली इट इज यूज इन द एम्बेडेड एम्बेडेड एप्लीकेशंस uh for dynamic it acts like a dynamic path selector why i am saying it uh, why i am saying it acts like a dynamic path selector is uh, it used to change uh, it is used to change the path from one one point to other point that's why that's why it is called the dynamic path selector for signals and powers okay so the relays in its contains uh, uh relay coil made up of insulated wire on the metal core and metal uh, armature with one more one or more contacts so how it works when voltage is applied to the relay coil current flows through the coil which in turn generates magnetic field so the magnetic field attracts the armature core and moves the contact point the movement of the contact point changes the power or signal flow path this you will understand uh, with more uh, if i show you the diagram so in the diagram here you can see the diagram the first one is a single fold single throw normal open relay second one is single fold single throw normal closed relay single fold double throw in the first case uh, when you energize this relay this will generate a magnetic uh, field so that magnetic field will uh, field will move this contact from this point to this point that means this will close the contact it will close the circuit or it will close the contact uh, normally it is open when you energize this relay it will close the contact so if you de energize this one uh, it will uh, move away from this point it will uh, it will uh, remain open so in the second one uh, single fold single throw normally closed here already the uh, like the contact is closed when you energize this relay then uh, this will open when you de energize uh, one second it will close the third one is uh, like path selector here it acts like path selector here it is already connected to this point when you energize this relay it will move from this point to this point and it will close the this path it will close this path so when you de energize it will move from here to here and it will close this path so in single fold single throw configuration as only one path for information flow for normally open single path single uh no for normally open single pole single throw relay the circuit is normally open and it becomes closed when the relay is energized normally closed single pole single throw configuration the circuit is normally closed and it becomes open when it's realized uh, sorry energized energized then uh, in the other case uh, it is closed and uh, already closed and uh, when you energize the relay it will move from one contact to the other contact so now the how you can Uh, connect a relay this is the circuit diagram here you can see the load circuit is connected through relay through relay and uh, there is a relay driver is there relay driver circuit which connects to the port pin of the microcontroller so when there is signal comes from the port pin uh, this uh, relay will get uh, energized uh, and this will close this uh, contact and it in, it uh, in turn close the circuit so in this way relay is controlled using relay driver circuit so next one is a fizo buzzer fizo buzzer so it is a, a output device it is a like a fizo electric device for generating audio indication uh, fizo buzzer contains fizo electric uh, diagram which produces the audible sound there are two types uh, one is uh, self driving and second one is external driving in self driving uh, driving uh, fizo buzzer uh, it generate only predefined tone but in external driving fizo buzzer it supports generation of a uh, different tones so uh, fizo buzzer can be directly connected to the processor or controller sometimes uh, but sometimes uh, it needs some circuit diagram or driving circuit uh, uh, 
uh, that need to be connected uh, in order to connect to the uh, controller or uh, 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 controller or microprocessor but uh, in generally it can be directly connected to the port pin of the microprocessor or the microcontroller now next one is uh, push push button switch so push button switch normally it is a input device it is used to uh, used for two configuration one is to uh, push to make and other one is to push to break push to make means uh, it will close the circuit when push to break means it will open the circuit so the put push button stays in closed for push to uh, push to make configuration and it stays in open for push to break configuration so it is used in many embedded applications like uh, push button buttons are used for reset uh, start uh, switch uh, and pulse generator so in the next diagram you will see actually how a push button is used for generating momentary pulse here you can see the circuit diagram for the corresponding uh, uh, this one you can see here it will generate high pulse and low pulse so in this diagram you can see like uh, the push button switch is connected connected and here, here at this point is this point is connected to the port pin and this is a low resistive path when you push this switch then anyway it is connected to the ground it is connected to the ground so low signal moves to the port pin low signal moves to the port pin so but in other case here in the other case here uh, push button switch is connected here push button switch is connected here so so when you and this is the high resistive path that is connected to the ground when you push the switch then this will take this path this will take this path rather than high resistive path that means high pulse moves in, inside the port pin of the controller or processor here low pulse moves inside the port pin of the controller or a processor so in this way push button switch works so in the next session we will see the keyboard thank you